Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Brittany Vandorf, and we're going to wait about a minute for people to come into the room. So just hang tight. Okay, that was exactly a minute. So I'm gonna get started. Uh, welcome to our September webinar, Leveraging Energy Source or Source Storage Resources to Improve Combined Cycle Power Plant Operational Efficiency with Dr. Wong from NMSU. Um, I am Brittany Vandwerf, the Communication and Outreach Specialist for New Mexico Established Program to Stimulate Competitive Research or New Mexico EPSCOR. Uh, EPSCOR is a nationwide program funded by the National Science Foundation. I'll be your host for today's webinar, along with uh, Isis Serna, our website administrator, who will be working behind the scenes to make everything flow smoothly. Uh, a few quick housekeeping items I want to go over uh, before we begin. I want to let you know that oh, I want to let you know that if you have questions at any point, please type them into the Q and A box, and Isis will politely interrupt Dr. Wong and read them out loud. Um, I also. I want to let you know, do a quick plug for our next and last webinar in the fall series, which is Visible Light Communication and Applications in Smart Grid with Dr. Shao um, from New Mexico Tech. Registration info can be found on our website. All right. Okay. And it, I want to get to our speaker He's because he's got some really great stuff to share with you all. Anyway, with that, um, I would like to introduce our presenter for today, Dr. Wong. Uh, Dr. Wong received his PhD in electrical engineering from Arizona State University and has significant industrial experience. He was previously employed at Mid-Continent Independent as a system operator, or, or Mid-Continent Mid Independent System Operator as a senior market R&D engineer. Um, much of his work has led to scientific publications and patents, most of which have been adopted into practice. He specializes in power system operation, electric electricity market design, electric energy policy, renewable energy integration, and energy storage. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Dr. Wong, and please begin whenever you're ready. Thank you so much, for Brittany, for the introduction. And here, I'm going to share my screen um, of the slides. Um, okay. So, can you please confirm if you can uh, see the, uh, the slides? Uh, we can, and we can see the list of the slides on the side, too. Uh, okay, so let me try again. Um, how about this time? Is, uh, is the, um, the slide coming up? Uh, the same, same thing. Okay, so I'm going to try again and just uh, use the... How about this time? Yeah, um, same thing. Okay, it's uh, weird. Um, the, okay, the slide. We Sorry. just see the, the, there we go, beautiful. Okay, beautiful, okay. So let's get started. And uh, um, hello everyone. Um, so today I'm going to talk about um, um, leveraging energy storage resources to improve combined cycle power plant operational efficiency. Okay, the scopes of uh, this topic is to um, optimi uh, optimally schedule the energy storage resources to minimize the short-term uh, operational cost of combined cycle power plants. And the second scope is um, uh, optimally size the battery energy storage to maximize the long-term profit of the common cycle power plants. Okay, so because, so today we have the webinar for one hour, so, so I have the luxury to go through some background before we get into the, 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 the model, okay. So first I'll talk about um, the general cost curves, okay. So the, so the, so the 
power is not free. So, it, so the, for the thermal generators, they cost a fuse. Okay, it's called fuse, natural gas, coal, oil, they're all fuel, and they, they, you know, they, comes, they, they come at cost, okay? And the, so you burn fuel, and then you produce the electricity, right? Um, so there are two um, important, important factors that can impa impact the, the, the cost of produ producing electricity. So first is the fuel cost, how much the fuel cost is, okay? The second one is the efficiency of the generator. And the generator has have um, two important cost curves. The input, input co output cost curve, which is the total cost curve. And the second cost curve is, is the incremental cost curve, which can be uh, inter interpreted as the marginal cost curve. Okay, here is an example uh, of the input output co cost curve. Okay, so, so I, I borrowed a graph from this book. Um, so this is the um, example cost curve. So basically this is the total cost. If you, if you produce this much power from this generator, that's the, that is the you know, total cost, okay? And the other cost curve is the incremental cost. It is actually the derivative of the, of the total cost curve, the input output cost curve. So this curve is, is the derivative or a P and then I can get this in incremental cost curve. So this can be interpreted as the uh, marginal cost curve. Okay. And it usually in practice, we don't use, we don't use um, this um, linear, uh, marginal cost curve. Instead, we use the stepwise, the stepwise cost curve. And, and this is approximated cost curve is convex and monotonically increasing. So this is, you know, usually how we model the cost, you know, Johnson cost in practice. So we use the step, stepwise marginal cost curve instead of linear. Or even quadratic. So the reason for that is RTU can only deal with piecewise linear cost curve. So that is stepwise incremental cost curve. Due to due to the computational, uh, excuse me, due to the computational complexity of the RTU electricity market model. So for instance, a typical MISO UC model. So it's a mini continent independent system operator, the human model has over 50,000 um, binary variables and 15,000 transmission conscience and the more than, uh, it's around one, um, one million um, rows and the columns and the four to five million and zeros. So if we include the, you know, the piecewise linear cost curve, um, so, so excuse me, if we, if we use the quadratic uh, cost curve, they'll make you know, this, uh, optimization model or the electric market even more difficult to solve. So as a compromise, uh, we, we approximate the cost curve using the, you know, the stepwise incremental cost curve in the market. Okay. So this is some background. And uh, so next I'll talk about the, the cost curve linearization. So this is, is a quadratic cost curve function for a generator and how we can approximate you know, into a uh, linear cost curve. So we actually, we can use the segments to approximate the cost curve. Okay. And in this case, we approximate it to three segments. And we can approximate um, each segment using a linear, um, se a linear segment. And we can um, calculate the slope of the segment. And the slope of the segment is actually the, the marginal um, cost for that segment. So we can basically, we can basically use, you know, for, 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 for so, 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 so the X axis is the, the unit output and the, the Y axis is the cost of the, um, at that output. 
and we can calculate the slope for each segment by using you know, the, the bridge point. So for instance, if you want to calculate the, uh, the segment three slope, we, we just you need to use to do P max segment three, which is this point. And, 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 and use you know, this, and this point is P segment uh, max uh, segment two, okay? And then we can get the cost for, for these two, okay? Then the cost difference divided by the, um, the, the, the megawatt difference, that is the slope of this uh, segment. So that is actually is the marginal cost if, if the unit is producing in this range, okay? And then like we can, if we, we can just sum up for each segment, we can sum up the, 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 the megawatt output for, from each segment, we can get the total unit output. So we just need to simply you know, add up PSEC one, PSEC two, PSEC three, and we can get, so there's also a P minimum. So we need to also add a P minimum and we can get a total output of the unit. Okay. And you can observe that this cost curve is, is non-decreasing, okay? It's not decreasing cost curve. So we don't need to worry about that, uh, um, you know, so we don't, need, we don't need to worry about that. We clear, you know, the segment, when we clear segment three before we clear, clear segment two because segment three has a higher cost than the segment, segment two. So, the, so the, the, the problem will always select the cheapest generation to produce power. And the, so for, the, for, this, for this case, um, so the, the, the generator will always clear in the segment with a lower cost um, and then clear the segment with a higher cost. Okay, so, so, so this is how, you know, we can approximate the, the nonlinear cost curve into linear cost curves. Um, and uh, the, usually the RTO allows uh, ten, uh, uh, at maximum we have 10 segments. So the maximum, segments you can bid as a generator is 10 segments. Otherwise, is is too computationally intensive for the RTO to solve the model. Okay. So again, so we can we can just approximate you know the uh, the quadratic um, a total cost curve by you know three piecewise linear function and then like the slope is actually the stepwise, the slope. So, so the slope for each of the segment is actually the marginal cost for the generator for each step. Okay. Okay, but not all generators they have the step. You know, um, the marginal cost like this. Okay. Some some of the generators they may have non-convex cost curve that if you add, so as the output increase, so the cost may decrease it's, instead of increasing, it's, it's may de decrease, it's non-convex. Okay, so example for that is the is for steam turbine generator uh, with four steam admission of valves. Every time it's open a new valve, the, you know, the cost decreases. But when you open the, the valve, you know, the, the, the marginal cost drop, but later on, if, as you produce more power, you know, the, um, the, the, the cost, you know, decreases. So this is, it, this is not non-decreasing. This is actually, you know, increase and decrease, increase and decrease. Okay, it's, it's, so it's non-convex. Okay, another example is the common cycle. Okay, so the common cycle cost curve is, um, the incremental cost curve is something, it can be approximated like this. And, it, it, and this one is not, it's also not non-decreasing, it is, so it increase and decrease and increase again. So, so if we want to understand you know, why the common cycle power plant has such non convex cost curve, that's you know, get into the model of the common cycle unit. The common cycle unit you know, consists of um, gas turbine and the steam turbine. This is steam turbine is a gas turbine. Okay, gas turbine actually burn gas, natural gas, and it's, it's uh, um, consume natural gas to, to produce electricity. 
okay and uh, and the, after the gener uh, the gas turbine um, burn the fuel and the fuel um, it has exhaust it has exhaust okay and then the, the common cycle power plant actually um, reuse that exhaust so the, the exhaust usually is high temperature and it can be used to produce steam um, for the steam turbine so actually the, the, the exhaust from the gas turbine actually get recycled so the steam turbine can use the exhaust from the gas turbine to produce steam and drive the in the steam turbine okay. and the, the simple cycle gas turbines efficiency usually is 35 to 45 excuse me 35 to 40 percent and the common cycle power plant efficiency is around 50 percent to 60 percent so so the higher efficiency is because of the steam turbine, which recycled the exhaust from the gas turbine. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so why it has such you know, non convex cost curve? Okay. The reason for that is if we want, so if we, if we want you know, the, 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 uh, the common cycle to produce power, the first thing we do is we need to turn on the gas turbine. And we will let the gas turbine on. So the gas turbine has a cost curve like this. this so it is non-decreasing cost curve, something like this. Okay. And and once you know the gas turbine produces at some power level, and it produces enough exhaust. So if the gas turbine produces enough exhaust, and the, that exhaust is enough to drive the steam turbine, and steam turbine will kick in because. Steam turbine here is like free power because it uses the exhaust from the gas turbine. So, so the, the marginal cost will decrease because the steam turbine starts to kick in and uh, drives down the marginal cost. And then like we would maintain like the low cost for a while. And after that, the steam turbine you know, reaches its maximum output because you know, the steam, steam, steam turbine cannot produce more because of the capacity of the steam turbine. So after this point, if you want to keep increasing the output of the, of the common cycle unit, then the power has to, you know, um, has to be from the, the natural gas turbine because the steam turbines get saturated. It cannot produce more power. So this is why it's, you know, the common cycle power plant has such non commas cost curve. Okay, common cycle power plant, they are gaining, you know, popularity you know, in today's um, power system setup, you know, because the first reason is they have higher efficiency compared to simple cycle units. A second, so they move very fast, um, so their rep rate is, is, you know, is pretty decent. And third reason for that is it has very good operational flexibility. Flexibility it can be turned on, you know, um, very quickly. Uh, it can, you know, their minimum downtime, minimum uptime is, you know, relative short comparing with, you know, large coal units. And, and also another reason is, the, you know, the, the natural gas price is, is going down, you know, in recent years. So that actually um, the reason why, you know, we, we have more and more common cycle power plant, uh, you know, um, you know, construction in, in, in the United States today. Um, okay, but, there, so their um, marginal cost curve, let's go back to this slide. Their marginal cost curve is non-convex, okay? But, but as I stated um, you know, in the previous slide, the RTO can only precise the uh, convex, it's uh, step-wise, it's actually step-wise, non-decreasing cost curve. So basically if the, the, the common cycle power plant, they want to you know, participate in the market, so they have to approximate this cost curve and make it a stepwise non-decreasing, you know, marginal cost curve and beat it to the RTO. So, 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 the, so, the, so their offer, the generation offer is not exactly, you know, match. It, 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 it's not, you know, exactly match their actual cost. And I will talk about that later. Um, okay, so, um, so before we get into the, the model, okay, I'm, so first thing I want to, um, Talk about is how the RTO works, the, the regional transmission organization works. So uh, RTO they manage the electricity market in, in the United States. Okay, so 
that, that, let's go through um, you know, this RTO uh, marketing process. Okay, the first step they do is called the firm of the reliability assessment commitment. So they actually turn on some must-run units. And these units usually for reliability region, all those units has um all, all those units have um relatively long leading time, more than like 36 hours. For instance, like nuclear plant, like they have very long uh, time to turn, you know, to, to, to you know to uh, start up. Um, and the, like hydro, um, like uh, hydro power plants, because they they may they have other purpose. So the, you know the, you you probably need to uh, schedule you know the availability of the hydro power plants. You know, you know, a multiple days ago. And so this FRAG has three days FRAG and seven days FRAG, and you can, so you can you know schedule the units, um, you know, um, long before the day had market. And and what, once the you know, the unit is determined as the uh, the online, that means it's to turn it on, and it will be labeled as must run units in the day head market. And the you know day head market, they're actually so day head market is just not one single piece. It actually consists at least of three components. The first component is the, it's called day has gak. Okay, day has gak is a uh, um, unit commitment problem and it's uh, 36 hours multiple interval and each interval uh, is one hour and the inputs are generation offers demand bids the demand bids include fixed bid and dispatchable bids uh, about 80 um, 85 to 95 percent are the fixed bid only five to 15 percent of the bids are uh, dispatchable bids or uh, a press a uh, press sensitive bids also, you need to do the transactions between RTOs and external control areas, network topology, outages, including generation outages, uh, transmission outages, and the, 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 the constraints, what constraints you want to include in the model, uh, what should be. And the, the output is the unit commitment schedule. The unit commitment schedule is, you know, you want to determine which unit is online, which unit is offline. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> After we solve the day has got, we will pass the you know the, the commitment decision, like the, the online offline you know of the units decision to the next step that that is day has get. The day has get is called day has securities constraint dispatch, is actually this pricing run of the day high market. So so the setup is very similar, but it so it, it only has you know 24 hours. So it, so it's so it will price. So if you compare it, you know, the, the commitment. Has six thirty six hours, but the, the you cannot dispatch only price for the first twenty four hours, and the, the output is actually the other price, including the unit dispatch, um, on piece that so those are the electric energy electricity price, uh, credit reserve and uh, the marking clearing price for the reserves. Okay, and then we will go to the uh, SFT, so they'll check you know if there are any security constraints violated. If it's violated, we will add it you know those constraints back to the SCAD and, uh, and run again until there's no violation. But uh, uh, in practice, uh, for instance, in MISO, only one iteration is allowed because it's you know the the, the time the, the time to solve it is is very long. And uh, like in, I said, in England, they, they so they can afford to uh, run more iterations because their system is smaller. Um, <clears throat> And after this, they had market, and and we will get into the, in, into the real time operation. Okay, uh, in the real time operation, maybe we'll, um, we have the intraday commitment, and the, so 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 the intraday commitment usually is the look ahead uh, commitment. So we will look ahead three hours, uh, and and check if we have enough um, units committed. If not, we will turn on new new units to um to have additional capacity for that. Um, okay, and the real, then we'll get to the real-time market. Real-time market will take the state estimation, the real-time plant output measurements, and the RDC, which you know are the um, constraints input for the real-time market. So the real-time market is a, is ten minutes. You solve the, the the market ten minutes ahead of time, and um, and it is energy and service service contingent problem, and it's a single interval, and each interval is five minutes. And uh, so, so the only phys physical elements in uh, only um, problem, and there's no what should be in, in the real time market. And the real time output of the so the inputs, um, the, the, so the, the, the inputs uh, of the you know the uh, uh, real time market is uh, the real time output of the units. That so 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 so, so that is the initial megawatt of the unit, and the real time generation offer. 
So generation, uh, they can update the generation offer every hour. Well, the intermittent resources they have, you know, privilege they can update offer every five minutes. Okay, and 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 the the load um is not low, low demand bid. So the load demand is is is, is the ten minutes ahead of forecast demand, and um, <clears throat> and network topology and the real time um, active constraints which are which comes from the RTCA real time condition analysis. And, and the output is the real-time unit dispatch, cleared uh, reserves and RMPs and MCPs for reserves, right? So basically, basically, so um, in the real-time market, we solve this market every five minutes and for every five minutes, you know, the, the unit will have a new dispatch and the new dispatch, we will set it as the, uh, the base point. So this, is, so, so this is the, we'll update it every five minutes Let's, let's call it base point. It's from the economic dispatch. So if the unit is also clear as regula regulation, so if, you, if, 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 if the unit is pro providing regulation reserve and um, it will respond to AGC signal. So AGC signal is actually is called the set point. So basically because you know, the, the real-time market is, is soft every five minutes, but the load at renewables they are moving around with even within this few minutes. It's, so they are changing all the time. The load and the renewable energies, they are changing all the time. So, but you need to balance the, you know, the, the, the load and the generation all the time. So, so, that, so, so in this is called sub five minutes um, um, per system operation. So in, in that case, we use the, you know, the AGC is called automatic generation control to balance the you know the um the demand and generation and and this agc signal is actually is you know is um updated every four four seconds and and so you add agc signal on top of base point that's the set point okay so so then if the unit is cleared as the regulation reserve and it will respond to the set point okay so with all this a uh, background let's talk about you know the uh, the model i'm going to uh talk about today. It's the common cycle of power plant and the energy storage co-optimization modeling. So first, um, suppose that we have the common cycle of power plant here. And if we invest in the energy storage at the same location after the common cycle of power plant, okay, um, then, so suppose this is the point of the interconnection, okay? So the RTO does, does not care about, you know, where the, the power comes from. So it can, can, be, can come from the, you know, the, the common cycle power plant, can come from the energy storage. So they, so they care about, you know, how much power like you give me. So basically, so I can use the energy storage to leverage, you know, the, um, the common cycle non-convex cost curve. Okay, so, so basically, if, for instance, if, if the RTO asks the common cycle power plant to produce 100 megawatts, and so the, the common cycle can produce 95, and the energy storage can produce 5 megawatts, but in total, it's still 100 megawatts, so then it's still good, okay? Um, so the so 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 how we can leverage you know the energy storage to improve the operational efficiency. So for instance, in, for this common cycle power plant, okay, um, this is called the economic operational range. So so you want actually you want the common cycle to stay in this range because it's cheaper to produce energy in this range. But sometimes, uh, the, the RTO may ask you to you know produce here and produce there. Actually, you can use energy storage. If so, so if 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 the RTO asks you to produce right here, but then but you can still use energy storage to you know to produce you know additional megawatt and you know um to still it can produce here, right? Okay, oh, excuse me. So if 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 the RTO asks you to produce here, okay, so you can let the, the common cycle produce inside, but at the meantime you you let the energy storage to charge. So the charge that means a negative generation, but in total it still gives you, still gives you you know the 
in the other, the, you know, the, the, the total output of the, you know, these two assets still give you, you know, you know, the, the you know, this much power. Okay, so so actually, you we can take one take advantage of the energy storage to that, the common cycle power plant to stay in its economic operation range. Okay. Okay. So next, let's take a look at the energy storage model. So energy storage model, it has several, several um, uh, constraints. Okay. Um, so first is the, the, the state of charge uh, variable. So that is like this is how much energy stored in the uh, in, 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 in the battery. Okay. And it is minus the ET minus. ET minus is the discharge rate. And the e, uh, and the ET plus it is charging rate, so that is so so, so that is um, the um, uh, can be interpreted as the output of the battery um, storage, and it is equal to the SOC zero. SOC zero is the initial um, a state of charge, initial like energy level in the battery. Okay, and uh, so the uh, the E plus and the E minus, they are the maximum charge and discharge rate, okay? And the UT is the, is the binary variable. It's, it is in charge mode, it's zero. And it's discharging mode, it's one. Um, so, so it's battery, excuse me, it, it, it's a binary variable. So it's, it's, it's to avoid, uh, you know, the, the, the unit is charged and discharged at the same time. Which is not possible for the for the for the for the, for the battery, and, and SOC is uh, has a you know a, a maximum capacity and a minimum capacity. Um, so 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 as so SOC bar is actually the maximum level of the in um maximum maximum level of energy the battery um can store in 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 it. Okay. So next is the unit um cost minimization model. Okay. So, um, so this is used to minimize the cost, the, the cost of the, you know, the, uh, the, gener the common cycle uh, power plant, the cost of the uh, common cycle power plant. And uh, so the PT plus E, um, T minus, minus uh, ET plus is equal to PT. So, so this actually, you know, um, is the, that means, so the ET minus minus ET plus is it, so so this is this is the output from the from the um, the battery, and the PT is PT is the unit output you know from the common cycle power plant, and the P the P, the capital P the lower the, the uppercase you know um P um time, a time T is the RTU of the real time dispatch target, so that means. So come if you combine the output of the the common cycle power plant and, and the energy storage output, it gives you the, still give you the same, um, you know, um, the uh, dispatch from the RTO of the dispatch target. Okay. And uh, the PT is equal to the you know this, so this this is is actually you know the um, uh, is from the different segments. From different segments. So, so this is the, for each segment, if you look at here, so there's a, for each segment, that de determines that how, you know, how much power like you cleared for each segment. And now here I, I, I put a banner variable. So it's the U segment K T. So that is commitment of this best segment K. And, and I impose this uh, constraints to avoid, so avoid that you, you so you must clear this segment first, and then this segment, then the third segment. So you, you cannot clear, you know, the first, then the then the third one. Even though the third one is cheaper than the second one, you still cannot you still cannot you know clear the third segment before the you know the, the second one. So so this this constraint is actually enforced, you know, the um once you have the non convex cost, um then you all you, you clear you know the you know the segment in in sequence, not based on the cost. Okay, and then I put in you know the energy storage constraints. <clears throat> so this is basically you know the um, the unit uh, cost minimization model. Um, so with if you have the energy storage 
you know, collocated with a uh, common cycle power plant. Um, basically, uh, you can basically you can um, minimize the cost. You know, um, so we can take advantage of the non-convex cost curve. So next, we will talk about you know the numerical results from that. Okay, so so the test case is uh, is a Texas um, uh, seven thousand bar system, and uh, so it's uh, it's Texas from uh, this. It's just synthetic data, and uh, it's it's uh, covers the geo uh, geographical um, footprint of the air cut. It's a uh, it's a tax uh, taxes uh, RTO. And the number of buses and model here is uh, six thousand seven hundred seventeen buses. Uh, there, okay. So number of branches. I, this is wrong. Nine thousand branches. I forgot put in there the number. And peak load is seventy four gigawatts. Um, peak load. And the database uh, here are uh, high, high quality synthetic electric grid models built from the public information and the statistical analysis of the actual power system. And the, the, the software I'm using is the is, uh, AIMS uh, 4.78. Um, and uh, you can see the, you know, the, uh, the interface here. And software I use is CPLEX 20.1. And the, the CPU I use to solve the problem is uh, Intel i7. Um, the sensitivity cutoff is the 0.05. And in input setup, um, it's, uh, we consider the renewable uncertainty, you know, 10 to 40% of uncertainty for different nodes. A low uncertainty is three to 5%, you know, in real time. Uh, now test days, I select the full different test days, summer peak day, summer off peak day, uh, winter peak day, winter off peak day. And uh, the, the round trip efficiency for the battery and storage is 85%. Okay, and the 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 common cycle power plant you know I'm looking at is uh, it has the minimum output is 65.3 uh, 35 megawatt. The maximum output is um uh, is uh, 590 megawatt, and the, the, it has two combustion turbine, one steam turbine, and you can see here is the uh, the cost curve, and and the the um so so this dot line, you see, this is 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 there. Um, submitted a generation curve, which is you know this stepwise, non decreasing cost curve. But but the, the the solid blue line is the actual incremental cost curve for the for the generator. Um, so you can see there's a large gap, you know, for for this range. And and actually this this range is the economic operation range for the combined cycle power plant. But the RTO does not have that information because what RTO, like the electricity market, market you know, operator says is, is this cost curve. And the, you know, the RTO does not know, okay, you are more efficient in this range. So they will probably they just dispatch you, you know, um, you know here or here. So, so we can use energy storage to, you know, to let the unit to stay in this range and to you know, lower the optional cost. And improve the efficiency overall. <clears throat> and here is the and also another important um, scope of you know, this project is you know how to optimally you know size the energy storage. And then here, so we can choose you know the optimal size of the energy storage. So uh, the optimal size of the storage actually goes here. So this is you know how much you know the energy that you can store in the you know in the battery. Okay. And and uh, then we minimize you know the, the total operational cost for the for the unit and the S is you know is different. S is actually for the different scenarios, right? So scenarios that's the for instance like we have um, uh, you know different days, different days, and, and we have different scenarios for the for the renewables as well. Um, okay, sorry, too much. Okay, um, and then we can use this program and to um, um, Solve, you know, what is the optimal size of the energy storage, and also the R5 effect mentioned. The R5 is the skilled battery cost, it's, it's dollars per megawatt per day, and including the investment cost, aggregation cost, you know, depreciation, depreciation cost, etc. <clears throat> okay, um, so next we'll talk about is the is it, so it's a from the NREL uh, report. Okay, so so you can see, th so, so th this is how much you know the um the battery cost per kilowatt hour. So it's per kilowatt hour. You can see in in a high uh, uh range, is is uh, th so today is like three hundred fifty dollars, 
per, per kilo hour for energy storage, for battery storage, um, lithium four hours, duration storage. Um, and uh, so by uh, in, a, in a high, you know, um, range is at, you know, uh, by 20, 2030 is $250 per kilowatt hour. And in the mid range is around 200 and the lower range is about, you know, 150. Okay. And the future, in the future, it may reach to, you know, $100 per, megawatt, per, per kilowatt hour, excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Now let's see, you know, so for that particular unit, you know, what, what is the optimal size of the battery and storage at different costs of battery? So the X access is the, you know, the cost of, you know, energy storage. And uh, so, you know, based on, you know, the, the you know, the, uh, this, this option, uh, you know, um, programming and um, different scenarios, I, I select, I think um, it's more than several thousands of scenarios of study. So this is actually, you know, the, you know, the, um, the optimal size of the, uh, if, you know, for, for that power plant. For instance, if, so if if the, the price is one hundred um, dollars per kilowatt hour, the optimal size of the you know uh, so 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 what is the best size you know the, the power plants should invest you know that is co-located um, you know with the uh, commercial power plant. Okay, it's, it's around I think it's around you know eight or maybe um, 12, twelve I think it's twelve megawatt hour. And uh, but so so as the so you can see, as the um the and so the the cost of you know battery energy storage increase, and uh, so the optimal size of the battery actually you know decrease because it's becomes more more expensive, and it's it's not profit you know, not profitable if the battery costs more than three hundred and twenty dollars per kilowatt hour, so there so so if this so it's, it's, if the the battery costs more than that is, is it's not worth into investing. Um, you know the um, the battery in in you know in, in the same location as the co you know common cycle power plant. Um, okay, so so if but so th so this graph is for that um, that particular you know common cycle power plant. Um, it's based on the you know the four sample days, and each day has one hundred scenarios with the consideration of renewables and road uncertainties. Okay. Um, and and here is you know it's it's the size of the battery, it's the size of the battery. You can see it's from from like one to uh, two hundred uh, megawatt hour, and and this is the average reduced fuel cost per day. So you can so the larger um, the energy storage is, the more you know cost savings you can have, the more efficient that you can operate the um, the combustion cycle power plant. But you can see the the marginal benefit is getting smaller and smaller as you know the um, the the the, energy, the size of the energy of the energy storage uh, increase. Okay. Uh, the next is called the net cost benefit. The net cost benefit is the the net cost uh, is, is equal to the reduced cost minus the the battery cost. So this is actually the reduced cost. This is the reduced cost. So if you have the battery. You no, know, this this size of the battery co-located with your common cycle power plant, and then so you so you can actually take advantage, you know, the under storage to make your common cycle power plant operate in the uh, you know close to your um, economic range, and and and, the, and what it will be the you know the cost savings and the that cost minus the battery cost that is your net cost benefit. So if so for this case, you know the if the the battery cost is three hundred dollars per kilowatt hour, and um, so the, the the net benefit is about one hundred dollars per day, and uh, so the annual net profit is forty thousand dollars, and the ten year net profit is you know, around uh, forty thousand dollars. Okay, another case is if if the battery cost is two hundred dollars per kilowatt per kilowatt, kilowatt hour, and uh, the maximum, so, so okay, so this is, will be an optimal battery, uh, optimal battery uh, size, okay? And at this size, you can get, you know, $320, you know, net profit today on average, you know, I'm considering, you know, different scenarios in different sampling days. On average, you can save $300 per day, but that is the, you know, the, um, the, uh, the net profit for that is around more than $100,000 per year and 
you know, more than one million dollars, ten years. Okay, so this is the um, the, you know, the anticipated um battery battery cost in the in the, in, in the next five years. And another case is if we we have you know you know really good um, progress in reducing the cost of battery. If the battery co costs you know around one hundred dollars per kilo hour, and so if you invest around like eight, it's like eight megawatt hour. You know, co-located with the common cycle power plant, you know the the, the net profit will be around five hundred and fifty dollars per day, and the the. the the, the return for that is like um, uh, $200,000 per year and over $2 million for 10 years. Okay, that is pretty good return for that. Um, okay, so let's take a look at, you know, um, so, so this is I this is a case uh, I also demonstrated, you know, um, what, what is the difference of the RTO dispatch and dispatch with the inner storage? Uh, so, so the blue, the solid blue line is the RTO dispatch, and uh, so the dispatch with the inner storage is the orange line, or the uh, red, oh yeah, orange line. So, so this dispatch is, so it, it's just the common cycle power plant dispatch. It, it doesn't include an inner storage because if you include inner storage, that should be exactly the same as the RTO dispatch because you, you still need to meet, you know, the RTO dispatch, but. Uh, in here, you know, um, you can see the, so the inner storage can you charge, you know, this is charge and discharge, charge, discharge. And so, 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 so if you sum, you know, the, the inner storage schedule with this origin line, it's give you exactly the, the RTO dispatch. It's give you the RTO dispatch exactly. And you can see, you know, so, so this, this, um, the two, you know, dotted, uh, dotted uh, lines, you know, between this is economic. You know, op, you know, operational range, and you can see that, you know, the origin lines, you know, they are actually close to the range. You can see the, so the for the blue line, the RTO actually asks it to you know to produce here, but, you know, if this, if you have inner storage, you can you can actually produce lower because you you can have inner storage to produce the rest you know of the, the power, but it still meets you know the RTO dispatch target. So you can so you, so you can see overall you have the orange line like close to you know to the economic you know um operation range and and, and the, in this chart the so the green line is the real time RMP and you can see the the inner storage is actually not is not following the press you know the electricity press instead it tries to keep the generator it close you know to the economic operation range and uh, and today, you know, um, one difficult challenge to manage under storage is, you know, is you need some like, you know, uh, LMP forecasting to manage the under storage. So you actually, under storage can just buy low, uh, buy low and sell high, right? So up charge in the market. But in, in, in this setup, you don't need to follow the price because our goal is to keep the generator within its, you know, within, you know, its, um, um, economic operational range, and, and and you know in the in the market it's very difficult to, to forecast RMP, and in that way you know it's still a long way to go. If you want if you, if you want to manage the under storage, and without you know very good RMP forecasting, so you you may not be able to you know get a good profit. But for this, it's like you know some guaranteed profit because you, you see this. So so it, it, so the strategy is very simple. It's just uh, you know it just charge and discharge to keep. To keep in the uh, the uh, the the um, common cycle power plant dispatch, you know, as close as possible to its economic operation range. See, um, so 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 this case is is if we have the under storage capacity is eight eight point three three megawatt hour, but if we increase the capacity, you can see we can keep, you know, keep the um, the uh, uh, dispatch of the common cycle. You know, even closer to the economic operational range. Okay, um, and and it's, and it's, and you can see uh, here is the okay. Here is the um, the the charge and discharge of the inner storage unit. Um, so basically, it's, it's, again, it's not following the the RMP. Okay, you can see there, there, so there is a RMP spec 
here, but it, it's still discharging. You can see it's still discharging, uh, discharging because it's trying to you know keep the the units you know operate operate at its um, most economic range, not not following the LMP. So that's why. So for this case, the it's it's, it's much easier to manage the inner storage because you just you just need to you know um to keep the, the you know um uh the common cycle power plant to operate at at its economic range you know as close as you know it can be okay the conclusion is that the energy storage can improve the operational efficiency of of generators with non convex incremental costs such as common cycle power plant and second is scheduling of energy storage does not need to does not need uh, LMP for costs. Instead, the strategy is very simple. It's just to keep the common cycle stay as close as possible in its economic operational range. Okay. And the battery cost has great impact on the optimal size of the uh, of the battery. So if the, so, if you basically, if the more expensive the battery is, the smaller size you want to invest. And at some point, you it, it, it's, just, it's just not worth to invest in it. Okay, and the results are dependent on the system and the generator parameters, but the model is generally enough to expand to any generators with non convex cost curves. So it's, it's kind of, so this is just demonstrates this example for that particular um, uh, common cycle power plant that can be you know, expandable to other power, you know, um, common cycle power plant or the uh, power plants with non convex cost. But you know, because we want to bring the, you know, the, the gap that uh, the, extra the extra cost curve and the the, the cost curve, you know, that like you approximated that like you bid, you know, to the, uh, to the electric market. Um, some future work. So we're going to simulate more testing days and we want to study, you know, the energy storage impact on greenhouse emission of the CCPP. So, so, so in some of the range, you know, it's not only, you know, the, um, the cost is lower, but also the, the carbon emission is also lower in, in this range, basically. So, so next step, we, would, we will study, you know, if we use, you know, the energy storage in, for this purpose and then how much uh, greenhouse emission um, gas we can reduce using this strategy. Um, and impact on regulation reserve provided by the common cycle plant with co-located energy storage and the resulting wear and tear cost. So, if the if so the common cycle power plant they usually they so they are very flexible units and they provide the recognition reserve and the recognition reserve as I talk about in the in the in the previous slide in the in front it's here and you, you do move up down down like you know all the time and it can cause additional wear and tear cost and the very wear and tear cost is actually the, the maintenance cost so you so the generator will probably you know, need more maintenance. If, if 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 you move you know the uh the you know the uh, the unit a lot, but if you have the inner storage, you you can use the inner storage to to move instead of you know that the the, the 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 physical unit to move. Okay, and the first one is the optimal bidding strategy of the common cycle power plant with co-located inner storage. So, uh, if you if you take a look at you know um this cost curve, even though the the the, the real cost curve is like this, but we can still you know um, make you know an optimal bidding strategy. But it's still um, stepwise, not decreasing, but you know we can maximize our you know the generated profit and uh, you know um, use another. So what is the you know, optimal bidding curve you know for the for the, for the unit if you know it has an inner storage, and and what is the optimal size for that? Um, okay, so that would be um, all the future work, and uh, that um, that's I want to acknowledge. First. Uh, uh, thanks to my under, undergraduate students, Ryan Bob and uh, Hamerdo, um, for their work and they worked with me uh, in the summer uh, on this project. And I want to thank you to um, the New, New, New Mexico uh, Consortium and the uh, Los Alamos National Lab and the uh, New Mexico EPSCO and SFRU program for their sponsorship on this project. And also to thanks um, to Brittany and uh, Asis for the coordination of this webinar. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you all for your attention and I'm open to any questions. And if you have any questions, please tap your questions in the chat box. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, that was that was awesome. Um, thank you for, for the recognition too. We all really appreciate it.
Okay. Um, so uh, like you said, please type your questions into the chat or the Q&A box and we would be happy to answer them. Um, while we're waiting for those to come in, I was wondering, you've seen, uh, you've seen a rise in popularity for uh, CCPM, CCPPs, but I'm wondering, are there any uh, like local New Mexico examples you can point to um, that have really gone on board with this? Um, I saw that you, you cited a Texas. Yeah, so, but yeah, because we are close to Texas. So, uh, mm -hmm. That's what, one of the reasons why I choose um, the Texas system as the tested case. Uh, yeah, so this is, so this is the, so I forgot to put the branch in number branches around 9,000 branches. Um, so, so this is the, um, I use the Texas, you know, um, system to produce like the real time prices, um, you know, for the generator and, uh, and to produce like the real time dispatch for the generator as well. Um, so you can see, uh, so all the, so, uh, so since it's like the article, right, you know, the dispatch is, you know, is, is, is um, tested based on um, the uh, Texas system. Cool. Yeah, that's what, um, that's what it looks like. And that's, a, that's, that's good, to, good to know. I'm hoping that maybe uh, this will be applicable to our other project members as well, or you can use their data. But enough about my questions. You've got two um, from some people in the chat, and it looks like... Dr. Leo, uh, it's, it says, it seems the benefit from storage to improve the efficiency of, oh, just, of CC power plants is RTO system dependent and the CC power plant dependent. What is the challenge for combined cycle power plants to accept the proposed solution? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, so basically, you need to perform this, like, uh, you know, cost benefit study before you invest in any, you know, energy, energy storage asset. If you make bad, you know, um, investment decisions, actually, you can end up with losing money. So you, so first the thing is you want to know what, okay, what is the battery cost and what is the aggregation cost and all other costs you know, included. Okay, so what, what what is cost for the battery? And second is is how much cost savings you can get from you know use leveraging this. Um, energy storage, right? Um, so, but but this, that, so that is true. This is um, system dependent. You know, this is um, uh, generator dependent. This depends, for instance, depends on you know. So, what what is gap between you know the you know this not so for instance, so if if this um this cost is 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 very close to this cost, then there there there's not no much no much room to improve, right? But if you see this one. Has a you know a quite you know quite a bit of gap between you know the, the you know the, the the true cost and the, the um the um the cost that the, the curve that bit into the the system then they have more room you know to to leverage the energy energy storage um so um I would say um this, so so each power plant should run such optimal energy storage siting formulation and to decide. If it is, you know, um, um, you know, worth to investing in energy storage. For instance, if the if the energy storage, for, for, even for this combined cycle power plant, if the energy energy storage, you know, cost more than three hundred twenty dollars per kilowatt hour, it just doesn't worth to invest in any energy storage assets here. Okay, so yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, we've got one. We've got one more question, and then uh, we'll wrap up in a second. But I wanted to get to this question. Uh, Weeping says, uh, "Is it possible to incorporate a data-driven prediction component in this analysis? The data-driven X O cone T can use the historical data component. Okay. Oh, <laughs> can use it, but I am not yeah. sure whether those yeah. data are available." Okay, I, I got that. So I think definitely yes. Um, so, so remember this PTS, so this is the, you know, the RTO dispatch target for different scenarios of the unit and, uh, for independent systems, you know, um, generators, they actually, they don't have, they don't have the, you know, the, the like the system information. So 
in this case, we'll assume like we, we have the, you know, the perfect information of the system, but uh, the generators, they don't have the perfect information of the system, but they can use their past, their, their his, his, you know, historical um, um, dispatch targets in, in, in the past. And, and, and then they can use data-driven you know, techniques to um, generate the synthetic dispatch target like for, the, you know, for the next 10 years, you know, stuff like that. And then, and, and then they, so, so they can put that, those target here, in here. Um, otherwise, you know, they have to you know, run the, you know, you know, the whole system and generate their dispatch, which is not possible. So, so, in, um, so the, um, the data-driven technique is absolutely, you know, very useful in this case. You know, if, if, you, if, if, if um, the generators, they know they're past the, the they're, they're past the, you know, the dispatch target and they can use their historical, historical you know, dispatch target and generate some um, future scenarios. Cool, yeah. thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna wrap us up really quick um, and for you two, there we go. Thank you. Um, so on behalf of everybody who's attended and the state office, I wanna thank you once more for being so generous with your time. Um, as everyone here likely knows, renewables are expanding rapidly in the energy sector, especially in New Mexico, and uh, CCPPs may be one way to relieve the variability introduced by their intermittent nature. So um, once again, thank you, thank you for being here and presenting with us today. Yeah, thank you for hosting the webinar. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the, um, for all, um, the people who joined this uh, webinar. Thank you. Yeah, we, we are all honored. Um, really quick though, before we sign off, I also want to thank my partner in crime, Ms. Isis Serna, and um, don't forget to join us in October for the final webinar of the fall series, Visible Light Communications and Applications in Smart Grid by Dr. Xiao. Um, until next time, have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.